Hi, my name is Dave Albright. I, uh, I was treated by Mr. David Dardashti and Dr. Francisco Aguiar uh, some time ago. I've been volunteering uh, with the facility and I thought now is a good time due to the coronavirus and the pandemic and everything that's going on um, to ask the two gentlemen about how the treatment affects the immune system and how the immune system, because of all of the immunocompromised people being attacked by this virus so much, uh, with so much vigor and force compared to the people who have strong immune systems. And uh, Mr. Dardashti, are you there? I'm here. How long ago were you treated? I don't remember, David. It was December 2019. Oh, December 2019, okay. So that's been like four months or so, four, five months. Okay, yeah. very good. Yeah. Um, well, I'll, I'll let the, Dr. Francisco first of all, explain what is immune system. So we start there. Uh, Dr. Francisco, are you there? Hey, I'm here. Look, basically the immune system is the, well, it's the defense that, that we have organized in our bodies uh, that will react in front of foreign bodies or microorganisms that will invade our, our bodies, right? Uh, the immune system, there, is a, there are several components in the immune system. There is blood components, cellular components, immunoglobulins, uh, there are molecules, and there is a very complex uh, system like 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 to explain easily, but try to do it easy and simple uh, well, we have a certain kind of cells and certain kind of molecules that they could become organized and systematically work in front of uh, allergens in front of molecules, in front of um, uh, foreign bodies, viruses, bacteria, and well, dif different other uh, components. And well, I mean, the immune system will provide us um, a part of the balance that we need to live, right? But as well, it is uh, susceptible to become ill. Okay, let me, can I? Yeah. Try to take your uh, a, from from the uh, professional a doctor to a more of a common people's uh, simplification. Yes, please, David. <laughs> Basically, what we have the immune system is the uh, army. Let's call it or the the defense uh, uh, system. Like any country has, any house uh, has for the people not penetrating in and breaking in. Um, armies, uh, a country has an army that defends its borders. And uh, there is a uh, uh, anti-spy operations. Or, uh, so in the, in the immune system, it works basically the same way, not different than, uh, than in the body. So we have cells. Let's let's just talk about uh, the white blood cells that uh, uh, recognize, identify the um, the enemy, attacks it, and it destroys it and kills it. And basically, that's how the if a person uh, gets saved from uh, getting sick or ill or having those viruses uh, penetrate the body. Now there is, sometimes the immune system is weak. An example, uh, I saw a, a presentation by a doctor that was talking about uh, cancer cells in the, uh, in the uh, body or in the uh, arteries and uh, many times the white cells just miss those cancer cells that are basically dangerous. And why do they miss the cancer cells? Not always they miss them, but once in a while, it it happens that they they don't recognize and they don't attack 
those cells. Now, called the same the same way, they are the when the immune system of those uh, white cells, they, they just say on the white cells. I want to make it simple. Are uh, are weak, then uh, they cannot attack or they cannot destroy the enemy or these viruses or any kind of uh, uh, germs that enter the body. Now the question is, what is the difference between a strong immune system and a weak immune system, or what is the difference between a, a white uh, blood cells that are do recognize the enemy and attacks and destroys it, and why sometimes the same white cells cannot identify the enemy and attack it? Now, that's a, that's a really a question, right, Dr. Francisco? Where the the sometimes the blood cells. Let's go. I'm I'm, pulling, I'm just referring to taking one thing at a time. The white blood cells to make it. Uh, as simple as possible. So what happens to those white cells? Why if sometimes they do very well, recognize the enemy or the uh, uh, viruses entering the body, and sometimes they don't. And that's, I understand, is a difference between strong immune system and weak immune system. Well, I, I will say a, a strong immune system um, we will have a an, an strong immune system when we are providing ourselves a good different factors, right? I mean, the health of the immune system depends on different factors, nutrition, uh, level of stress management, uh, diet, uh, habits, um, exposition to different kind of waves like radiation or, you know, light. I mean, there are several uh, gimmicks, you know, uh, there, there are different uh, factors that will contribute to have a, a strong and solid immune system or to have factors that will make weak the immune system, right? Like, let's say, radiation, 5G, noise pollution, stress, uh, diet, you know, like uh, a very uh, industrial diet then, I mean, the components that will affect the immune system is not, not, not difficult to understand. In the same way, it's not difficult to understand what it will make weak an immune system. Um, all these factors will play all during our lives um, and they can contribute in some moment to the for the development of the disease or to control the disease, no? Like in the example that you were having, that you were doing about the cell cancers. I mean, yes, through our lives, uh, there are several times that our bodies will produce cancer cells, but, but logically, you know, like uh, normally, the immune system will try to detect these cells and will destroy it till the point that, as you say, the immune system becomes weak for one of the factors that we talk malnutrition diabetes high blood pressure uh cholesterol triglycerides uric acid disorder uh, you know uh, hiv i mean there there are several factors that will impact negatively this this immune system and and well that's when we will express the disease you know, I like to get, I was to, 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 we're talking for, to, for common people like myself uh, to understand. And that's why I started researching and understood, uh, learn about the uh, human anatomy is what is the difference between that cell that is not, uh, is not strong enough to fight the virus what is the difference between that cell and the healthy cell that is able to fight the, the uh, virus what happens to that cell we understand the causes are what what you mentioned but what happens to the cell what is the difference between the healthy cell that can can uh, protect the body and a unhealthy cell that cannot protect what happens? 
Well, I will think in maybe the way how the cells react, it is through molecules and substance that will attract them to, you know, to react like, like allow me to say a foreign body in a tissue, right? A piece of wood that the same cells will not recognize and then that will produce a waterfall of substance that the same white blood cells will recognize in order to destroy uh, the little piece of wood in the tissue. No, something, something like happened with the viruses or with the bacteria in the, in, the, in the tissues where they invade our bodies, right? The white blood cells cannot distinguish as proper these cells or these uh, bacteria or the viruses, the proteins, and that's the moment where they start to release uh, peroxides or uh, super oxygen molecules to, to destroy the, the foreign body, the virus, uh, the bacteria. Then maybe are the transmitters uh, a very big uh, important factor to not make react the cells properly, right? When, when the cells cannot uh, determine this, these molecules or substance. The difference is is a cell that uh, let's put it in a like a in an army term a soldier that's been wounded or is damaged and or is fatigued fatigued, fatigued. And does not have the same strength is uh, it's doesn't is not equipped it's not healthy enough it doesn't have the strength or the energy um or the good eyesight to recognize the enemy and attack it. I have a question from my experience of being treated. Um, before my treatment, I had high blood pressure, high blood sugar, and uh, I, I consumed a lot, of, a lot of sugar. And after my treatment, my eating habits and my cravings completely changed. My blood pressure was lower, my blood sugar is lower, and I eat like I'm a completely different person. Now, how is our, how is that helping my immune system versus, you know, the before treatment versus the after treatment? How is, how, why has my body been put into a state after the treatment that I'm able to change my eating habits? I mean, you know, people try changing their eating habits for years, yet, uh, somehow I was able to change the eating habits and now I feel that I'm so much healthier and stronger and I don't feel my body being overloaded from sugar or starches or anything like that. And I've been thinking over the last couple of days that has to be helping me, uh, you know, from being a, a subject from this virus. Let me, let me try to answer that question. I mean, the permission that was, uh, Francisco here. Um, our body, is uh, if we look at the entire anatomy of a human body is made of uh, the computer it has a uh, brain and the computer has and the hardware hard drive and hard, uh, whatever the computer the central control of the computer we have our brain then we have our central nervous system, which is, provides the energy the, um, that triggers the brain to function. One of the difficulties and why people become obese or uh, crave sugar or they, they uh, get all these diseases is because the connection between the brain and the other uh, main uh, parts of the bodies are lost. Let's say, let's take your example. Uh, you pre, you were you you couldn't control your eating habits. It's the the really the reason it seems, and there are some studies that show that that there is not a good connection between your gut and your brain. Otherwise, you you eating, and there is a signal that's supposed to be reaching your brain telling telling it that you ate enough is not getting there okay or getting there getting very slowly there and what 
once that connection is improved, then you know that you ate too much and you stop. And it goes within the entire body having uh, the same the same kind of uh, problem or, or solution when there is no good connection between your brain and your your body. Uh, an example, if you don't have if your fingers in your hand are numb, you touch a hot stove and uh, your finger keeps on burning and uh, you don't like you're burning your finger. How do you know that you're burning your finger and you pull it? Because there's, your brain gets a signal uh, received from the finger, from the nerves in your finger, that tells the, the brain uh, within uh, two thousandths of a second, it's a split that you can't even, uh, even count it uh, that quickly, that you're burning your finger, then you pull your, your, your hand off. But if it's numb, then it could, takes a long time. By the time you pull your, your finger off, the half of your, your I'm hand. already too full. Okay. Yeah. So, Dr. Francisco? You're, you're muted. David, yeah, David, I was thinking, David Albright, that um, it's a, I think it, it is a combine, it's a combination between two systems becoming resetted, you know, um, like David and I, we always talk about this. If, there, if this treatment could impact a biological system, it will be the neurological system and the immunological system. Both systems are impacted basically by this uh, treatment. And in your case, or well, in, every, in, every, in everybody's patient case, uh, I think we can find a result of these two systems impacted, right? In, in one part, we will find the result of the effect of anti-inflammation that the that the treatment produce then the patient lose weight the patient looks uh, healthier right they they look uh, they lost they lose this uh, fluid retention right many patients they that they were suffering from uh, uh, peripheral neuropathies they stop you know but as well there is and all these um, effects, I will say, there is uh, related with anti-inflammation, but as well with neurology system becoming resetted, right? It's not that, that the treatment heal. It is that by the treatment, the system seems to reset itself, right? It is like... like You're saying to reconnect the, the, uh, the lost connections because it works through impulse, the electrical impulses, the neurological system. And the, that connection, for some reason, be, because of the anxieties and the, the, everything else that you said damages the body, that, that system is not functioning uh, properly. So once you get this treatment, it resets. The connection, the, the body start uh, uh, reconnecting more correctly and sending the signals in, in a proper and orderly way. It's just like electrical system that you have a, uh, when, a uh, when you have a electrical line is damaged and is not reaching the bulb correctly and you see the bulb uh, going, going on and off. So that's what you're basically talking about, Dr. Francisco. And yeah, I feel like I had a program that was a program that was running that formed my eating habits, that was not connected to anything in terms of looking at food as fuel. And then I feel like that program's gone now. It's just, a, it's no longer running the program, you know, and it's, uh, it's a whole different thing. Yeah, and I have lost weight too uh, as a result of the treatment. Uh, okay. Dr. Francisco calls this uh, an adjustment, reset of the uh, neurological system in the entire body, right? Which means that they um, reconnect or retune the entire uh, neurological system in the body. And at the same time, it, it does um, affects the, uh, the body 
to, to get healthier by reducing inflammation in the body that throughout, and this happens throughout the years, right, Dr. Francisco? It's not just a matter of... Uh, We've been working in this explanation because, uh, I mean, in medicine, it's very difficult to understand that one substance could impact uh, different systems or different kind of tissues because all of them, they will have a, a different origin, right? And, and usually this origin will determine if if one group of systems or organs or tissues will be impacted in one way or another, right? They, we, we basically, in our, in our tissues, we have basically three origins, right? Uh, the endodermic, the mesodermic, and the ectodermic, right? For example, the, the, the neurological system belongs to the ectodermus, right? Then all the structures will have certain similarity, right? Between, for example, blood uh, or immune system, they have the same origin, right? And then what I'm trying to explain is that it's very difficult to find one substance that, that could impact many different organs, many different tissues, many different systems at the same time. And sometimes in, in a very paradigm, in, in a very paradoxical effect, right? I mean, the one, the people who is who is depressed, they become better. The people who is anxious, they become better. The people who is having pain, they decrease the pain. You know, it's it's like it's strange. Then that's why we think the treatment doesn't have a an a specific effect, but it it helps the body. That's what I'm saying to reset the health in their own systems. I don't know, David, it, it, I'm trying to explain it as simple as, as I can. Well, let me make it simpler for you. Uh, we are obviously in medicine, the understanding always in medical school and medicine is a community that you need one substance that will affect or cure or balance a certain area in the body. But Medicine never talks about touching and uh, resetting the um, main part of the body, which is the brain and the central nervous system, uh, to trigger that part of the body that in turn is the boss, uh, is the, uh, the source of that controls the entire system, everything else, skin, uh, everything that you spoke about, the brain is in charge of uh, fixing or readjusting the, every system in the body. What we do with one sub substance is to triggering the central nervous system, which it in turn uh, turns on the entire brain and then by uh, uh, by triggering the brain to adjust itself or to, to wake up, it sends the correct uh, signals to the entire body. So we're talking about fixing or, or trying to reset the entire body by going to the source where the control of the whole entire system, body system, is located, which is the brain. And what triggers the brain is the central nervous system. So we're touching that, in turns it uh, triggers the brain, and the brain, uh, we don't understand brain good enough, it's so sophisticated and so uh, beautifully put together that they send the correct signal to the rest of the body. And that's how in, in uh, one, we can call it really one, one substance. It's the only substance that triggers the central nervous system, the brain and the subconscious to at the same time to wake up or to, to be reset, to bring the, the old three into, into harmony. And that's what uh, the, the body start fixing itself. Not uh, going to different uh, departments or areas.
I felt like my entire body was completely reset. My entire recalibrated. Dr. Francisco? Well, that's very common for us to hear, right? Uh, I mean, the patients in general, they feel just this uh, overwhelming feeling of uh, uh, feeling better, you know, of benefits. Uh, it, we receive patients in many, in many different circumstances, right? They share, uh, sometimes they have some group of diseases, metabolic diseases. Some of them, they have a neuropsychiatric diseases some of them they have uh, obesity and other kind of, of diseases and in general uh, all the patients refuse to feel way more than they were waiting for right that 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 they were expecting they usually come for one thing and they found that several uh, diagnoses that they were dealing with uh, they get better, right? It's very difficult for us to say to heal, right? But, uh, but it happened. Improve. It happened. Improve, yeah. Improve. Then they improve. Improved. They improve. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, for example, there is always that, that David always do, and it is to take a picture of the patient at the beginning to show this picture to the patient at the end of the treatment, that it is a constant, that they look... Uh, I mean, not only the expression change, but they look even healthier with more color, right? Like uh, healthier. The yeah. What is the difference between a, a baby that was just born, five years old or three years old, and then between a person after he's gone through life and, and used drugs and ate wrong, if they... Uh, processed food and noise and anxiety and depression and and everything right now people are full of anxiety full of depression some people have ptsd and uh, how do you put the difference between that five-year-old and a person that is now 30 years old has gone through all this a uh, misfunctions obviously has turned every part of his body in a uh, unhealthy status. Now, how you, you get all this to go and readjust? You go back again to the central uh, control, which is the brain, and you fix the brain, and you fix the, uh, the source of the energy that provides, that triggers the brain, which is central nervous system. And once that triggered, then you have the entire body starting to fix itself by triggering the brain, triggering the, um, the main uh, trigger in the entire body. Was it's not really, it's not something that in the medical community um, uh, totally uh, understood yet. Because always there is one substance that's one thing and another substance that another. But we, I'm looking in the Maimonides and the past at Greek uh, physicians where they looked at what is the root of a one's problem? What is the root of issue of a, of a patient or a person that's suffering from anxiety and depression or from other neurological problems? They all come back the root is always, most of the time, it starts where the, the center or the control of the body is. And the control of the body happens to be into the brain. So we're basically triggering the brain and leaving it to the brain uh, to, set, to send the right signal to the rest, to rest of the body. And that's how the body starts many other functions starting to uh, uh, reset themselves and be fixed. How would you put that in the medical term, Dr. Francis? I'm not sure I can explain it better than you, David, because you explained it very simple. And something that it is true is that we don't have all the... Um, 
we don't have all the explanations about the treatment you see because with every patient uh, we observe new benefits of the treatment and that's uh, that's a reality for us it's not i mean we've been very surprised uh many times most of the patient most of shot. the times with the patients yeah i mean now now i get the custom to tell my patients well if there is something else you will tell me because uh, i'm not surprising anymore to keep finding new uh, benefits for the treatment right then it is true it is true that i am sure we will continue finding new opportunities for this treatment because with every patient we have new uh, information to to look you know like it's very interesting to keep working with, I with this treatment like, i think it's going to take another thousand years for us <laughs> to really fully to understand, understand it but we in a simple we try to make it a in its most simplistic explanation uh, is that once we're talking about there's a whole neurological system throughout the body and that neurological system has a center has a um, it connects all of it to to one place which is the brain and we see once you trigger the brain somehow we can explain that that's where um, everything starts but we don't understand it fully it works exactly and the inflammation goes away uh, at least we know that i know that uh, most of this accomplishment is by triggering the central nervous system in the brain so in a situation like this where we have uh, a lot of depression associated with the quarantine a lot of anxiety you know the the unemployment rate and the effect of these people like for example my friend that I sent down who had PTSD, who you cured, he's back now, he's better. Uh, but uh, for those who haven't been treated, how, is, how are those external life factors uh, impacting their immune system? And uh, could treatment, uh, you know, change that? Well, I will say that, well, the, this quarantine and this, uh, COVID-19 time will challenge uh, all of us, right? Then something happened with, with the constant uh, feeling of stress, right? With, with the uncertainty that we feel on these times. And it is that uh, we release in the brain, in our bodies, we release certain kind of molecules, substance, for example, cortisol, that, well, usually the cortisol it is a hormone that it, it will keep us alive, right? Like reacting, observing, taking decisions, thinking about, but, but at the end of the day, we should be uh, in the proper circumstance to close our eyes and, and go to sleep and, and then have five, six, seven hours of proper sleeping and next day be ready to start with the new, uh, with the new routine, right? But, what happened in this quarantine, in this time of disease and worriness, it is that many patients, they are mostly the ones that they are more exposed to anxiety and depression. Uh, this quarantine, the isolation could uh, trigger many of the symptoms that the patients uh, refer, right? Like the lack of sleeping or uh, restless leg syndrome or... I don't know, ju just uh, moody or low energy or lethargic or, I mean, there are different ways to express uh, uh, psychiatrical disorders, right? And definitely the quarantine, the isolation will trigger, is triggering many of the symptoms of the patients, right? That it will disbalance ma many of the patients. Then, uh, I mean, something that we have been observing is that this treatment works beautifully to, to help the people in, with PTSD, with um, uh, depression, anxiety, and I don't know, I'm, I'm sure this treatment will fit uh, every patient that will look for this, uh, for this help. There is also uh, another thing that happens 
my it 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 does uh, it's not psychedelic. I want to make that very clear. It's not psychedelic whatsoever. It's perception, where it touches the human subconscious, where you realize that uh, we have too much unbalanced fears that they should not be there. There are we are we have always running around with this question mark of the, the what's going to happen what's going to happen and the once you sub it touches your subconscious you understand that um it's never end of the world and the there is room and uh that is the sky is not falling all the time and that's how people get rid of their anxiety by by it's touching is their subconscious understanding themselves being more sure of themselves, getting rid of their fears. And uh, obviously PTSD is something else, but the depression and anxiety and all those ADDs and all that interconnect to each other. And the connection basically is that we take everything too hard and we put too much pressure on ourselves and our body and our brain uh, and by Touching the subconscious, when a person is able to see himself from the outside, like in a mirror, and seeing that things are not so bad, and it's it, uh, we don't need to take uh, the life so harshly and say and be having so much fear of wrong things or negative things happening otherwise you, you become more positive and you see the more positive uh, things in life instead of just seeing the negativity yeah that has been my experience almost every year that i do it and uh, almost close to eight thousand people that we experience uh, how they get rid of the anxiety and depression and all that. Besides, I'm mean, not talking about also the these neurotransmitters that uh, get readjusted that also help get rid of the depression. Uh, now there is a whole group of uh, psychology, psychology that uh, looking at the uh, depression not being chem chemical imbalance but inflammation. And that's one thing that we accomplish here, where the if the inflammation is reducing the entire body, obviously reducing the brain as well. So it reduces depression. Now. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for taking the time to to be on this video and and talk to the audience and me about uh, how it impacts us. And I appreciate it. Any anything else uh, before we close? Well, I, I will be very happy if you keep inviting me to these meetings. Maybe next time um, uh, Dr. Julia Rabao can join us. Uh, she's an endocrinologist and she's a specialist in metabolism. And we can talk as well about inflammation, metabolism, and this uh, neurostimulant technique. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you for inviting us. Thank, Thank you, you David. Thank you, Dr. Francisco. Thank you, Mr. Dardashti. Good day now.